Uh oh. What's the problem? The rules say that it is. But the diagram says that. What the hell's going on? Well, the answer, the answer is, is to do with a dispute about a little something called existential import. Trips off the tongue, doesn't it? Existential import. Specifically, the existential import of categorical, uh, categorical propositions. Now, believe it or not, the whole debate hinges on unicorns. Well, not really, but I can give a good example using unicorns. Here's the problem. What do we assume about every single proposition? What is the defining feature of propositions? They have truth value. How many truth values are there? Two. So we assume in logic that every proposition is either true or false. Not some vague gray area between the two. It's either true or it's false. OK. Here is a categorical proposition for you. All unicorns have a horn. Let's say all adult unicorns, because that would be a difficult birth. Um, OK, so all adult unicorns have a horn. True or false? Got to be one or the other. You know what it means, right? This is, I'm not just saying gibberish. So this is a meaningful categorical proposition. You know what it means. You should be able to tell me the truth about it. What is it? Who says true? Nobody says true? Come on, be bold. Raise your hands high, unicorn lovers. All right? Who says false? Can you define the term first? You, you don't know what a unicorn is. I just want to see your definition. There you go. A unicorn is a mythical creature that resembles a horse with a horn. Uh, incidentally, why did, uh, why did people, where did the myth come from, do they think? A, an equally ludicrous but actually existing creature, the narwhal. A narwhal is a whale unicorn, right? I mean, it, it, it's just as crazy as a, as a horse unicorn, but it actually exists. Uh, narwhals are whales that have a unicorn horn, a very long, you know, spirally classical unicorn horn. And the, the assumption is they found narwhal skulls and thought they were horses or something like that. But anyway. All right. What's the problem? Why can't you give me a straight answer? Why are you all dithering about the truth value of this proposition? Because unicorns don't exist. You, you could have said that a bit more gently because you've broken it to some people. <laughs> now they're going to have to go home and burn their lunchboxes. Um, yes, that is right. Destiny, you are correct. There are no unicorns. So what? But in like, I mean, let's say like a book, like let's say Campbell's of Narnia or something, there's unicorns in that book, and they have horns, so like... Yeah, I mean, what is a unicorn? Picture a unicorn. Are you picturing something with a horn? Yes, you are. So unicorns, by definition, have horns. So it seems like we want to say it's true, but then it seems like we don't want to say it's true. The reason why we don't want to say it's true is because we are troubled by this. The existential import of a categorical proposition is what implications, so import here is in the sense of implications rather than bringing into a country. So the implications that the truth value of a proposition has for what exists. Okay. If we say that universal categorical propositions have existential <laughs> import, then what we're saying is, if they're true, that means something exists. Okay? Now, the assumption in classical logic is essentially that uh, universal categorical propositions do have existential import. That means if it's true that all SRP, it means that there are S's. S's exist. That is why, incidentally, Let's remind ourselves of something we learned that assumes 
classical logic. Classical logic is the logic assumed by the ancient Greeks. What did we call this shape? Square of opposition. And we learned, what is this relationship called? No, it's not called sneeze. Contraries. This is called subcontries. And this is called, and this is called, ah, nothing. Because nothing goes that way. That's subaltern. All right, gets you every time. Now, what we, and we also, of course, learn contradictories. What do we know about contraries? They can't both be true. true. So you can't have this, right? And we learned that if this one was true, that one had to be true. Why? Well, because suppose this said that all uh, unicorns had horns. We're assuming that means that unicorns exist. So, of course, that implies that some unicorns have horns, right? Well, that's the assumption of classical logic. Modern logic is the logic of Venn diagrams. And according to Venn diagrams, not all categorical propositions have existential import. Guess which ones do? Remember, what does the X mean? Something's there. What does the shading mean? Nothing's there. So what kind of categorical propositions have existential import? Particular ones. Because if a particular one is true, it means there's something there. Something exists. Whereas universal ones do not have existential import. Why not? Because they're just saying that there's nothing there. Let's work out the truth value of all unicorns have horns. It looks like this. This is unicorns, this is things with horns. In fact, in the real world, as it actually is, is this true? Yes, Samantha, you, you nodded your head. Why is this true? Because they have horns. Well, but unicorns don't exist. Well, but why is this true? What is this in fact saying? What does the shading mean? There are no unicorns that don't have horns. Yes, this in fact means that there are no unicorns that don't have horns. Because the, this would be the unicorns that don't have horns, and it's empty. Is that true? Yes! Horses are not unicorns without horns, okay? Um, why, why is this true? Because there aren't any freaking unicorns, right? So of course there aren't any unicorns without horns. So this is true. What is the truth value of this? What does this say? This says there are no unicorns with horns. Is this true or false? No, it's true. Why? Because there are still no freaking unicorns, right? This just says there are no unicorns without horns. This says there are no unicorns with horns. They're both true because there aren't any unicorns, right? Right? What logical relationship have we just undermined? No, not yet. Contrary. Why? Because both of these are true. In countries, that can't happen. Now, this says some unicorns have horns. True or false in the real world? False. Why? Don't make me say it again. There aren't any unicorns. If this was true, it would say there would have to be unicorns. Are there unicorns? No. So this is false. What relationship have we just undermined now? Subalternate, because subalternate says if this is true, this has to be true. Doesn't work in modern logic. And incidentally, this is why this argument is invalid in modern logic. Because in modern logic, you can't deduce a particular from a universal, because universal just tells you what there isn't, whereas a particular tells you what there is. Whereas in classical logic, which the four rules assume, you can deduce a particular from a universal. Ah. Now, the, there is one way to make the diagrams and the, their rules line up. Ethan, what is that way? If the conclusion is particular, then what the premise is. Which is rule number five, which is on page 248. You just add one more rule, and that will bring them into line. But classical logic just assumed the four rules, and as a result, there are more valid arguments according to classical logic than there are to modern logic. Because the, uh, the classical logic says this is valid, 
whereas modern logic says it isn't. So I think modern logic has something like 16 valid, and classical logic has something like 24. So there's like eight like this that are, um, that are valid by classical logic, but not by modern logic. However, if you add the extra rule number five, then they both agree. There's only 16. So rule number five would rule this out, because rule number five says if the conclusion is particular, a premise must be particular, and this violates that rule. Let's just finish this. Um, this is true. Uh, some <coughs> unicorns uh, do not have horns. True or false in the real world? False, because it implies that there are unicorns in the round. So that gets rid of this relationship. And of course, what, is, what does subalternate say? They can't both be false? Well, they are both false. So this is what you're left with in modern logic. Modern logic, you don't have the square of opposition you have the x of opposition. Because notice, contradictory still works. The universals are both true, but the particulars are both uh, false. And the stuff about this is in chapter, yeah, here we go. Here's, here's the classical uh, square of opposition on page 206. Here's the modern square of opposition on page 209. That's all you're left with. Now, the modern square of opposition is just super cautious. So why have you learned the classical? Because it applies in most cases. It works in every case where there is at least one member of the subject class. The only time it fails is if the subject class is totally empty, like when you're talking about mythical creatures. But if there's any members of the subject class, then by all means use the classical square of opposition. That'll work. Uh, it only fails in cases like that. But if you don't know what S is, then, for all you know, there aren't any. And so, if you want to be super cautious, you use modern logic. And that's the logic assumed by Venn diagrams. And we're out of time, and don't forget to do your homework.